talk about the actual basketball with with some anecdotes. I mean, I, I, hey, if I I sit courtside, I, I want to share that experience with you guys. Okay, I show up to the game, show up a little bit early. It's it's opening night. The Mavericks are having this um, party, right? They're having this party outside in Victory Plaza. For those of you who don't know, haven't been to a game, Victory Plaza is just this like. It's pretty much the walk up to the stadium. It's pretty cool. You've got like restaurants and bars off to the side. Um, I was kind of, I was like, dude, I, I want to get there early. I want to experience this party. It was terrible. Uh, I might have just got there a little too early. Mind you, it's October 24th, 90 plus degrees outside. So it feels like shit, but we, we get there. Um, I say we, I meet Nick outside. I'm like, we should, we should show our faces. It'd be kind of fun. It's just a blue carpet and you do a couple photo booths here and there. Not really a lot going on, but also not probably not designed for somebody in his late twenties who's been to a hundred hundreds of Mavs games and you know, has kind of seen this already. So anyways, then we go in. Okay. And I'm walking around. I, I, I mind you, I'm feeling so out of place. Every single, every single area I turn, I'm walking in, I go to my section, I show my tickets. I'm like, Hey, do I do you go down here? And they're like, Oh no, you got to go down through this tunnel. You go through this tunnel. You go through, you get this wristband. I'm like, oh, okay, shit. So I go in, go through, get this wristband. I'm walking in the tunnels. <laughs> late, if, late twenties. I'm not wrong. Anyways, walking through the tunnels under like underneath the stadium, get out, watch. I'm watching warm ups. There's about 50 minutes before the game starts. Luke is out there. They're playing Slovenian music. Devin Vassell looked good. He's not he's not ready to play just yet. He did not play last night for the Spurs, but he looked good in warm up. So I, if you're a Spurs fan, you're wondering, I have I have inside information. He looked good and he looks like he's getting ready to play. Wimby came out. Jesus, man. It, it's unbelievable how big he is and how fluid he is. And then it's just crazy, these these professionals, man. They're he's shooting practice threes. Mind you, he shot terribly from three in the game. He's shooting practice threes. Uh, my God, he he bar- didn't miss any. Like they were all just swishes, and it wasn't like he was just shooting open ones. You know, they have an assistant coach that's out there with his hand in, a hand in the face. So then, uh, you know, I'm like, okay, I've seen warm ups. There's about 30 minutes to start. There's this club, Angels Envy, is what it's called, or something like that. If you're sitting courtside, you get access to it. So they're like, hey, go go here, get your wristband, go eat dinner. There's free food in there, and I'm like, all right. In my brain, you know, I'm thinking, right, a hot dog, maybe maybe like a burger, or chicken tender. A chicken tinder bucket or something. <laughs> chicken tinder bucket. A chicken tinder basket. All right. Uh, so I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll go in there. Maybe one of those little Pizza Hut pizzas they sell. I walk in. This shit was unbelievable, man. The, it was like a five-star gourmet meal. Genuinely. I mean, I, I ate I ate stuff I've never even heard of. I had some something, some duck skewer thing that was unbelievable. Uh... And a, a, I think it was a lamb egg roll. I mean, I, I just, also unbelievable. They had a guy there making tacos on site for you. That was delicious. Their wings were delicious. They had a little cocktail bar. And mind you, all of this is free. And now I'm thinking to myself. Now I'm thinking to myself. You, these people are sitting courtside. Do they really need free food? That That's the thought that popped into my brain. Everyone in here is very well off. I had some cocktails. Two beers during the game. So, and, you know, I was talking with a friend about this last night. And they made a good point. Once I realized this, I was like, okay, that is true. Those tickets are expensive. So, they're, therefore, it's, you know... uh it's kind of baked into the price. It's sort of baked into the price. So uh, that that does kind of make sense when you think about it. But great for me. So that, that, that's that's exactly right, Cole. It's not... When you consider the price of the ticket, it makes sense. So anyways, the game's getting close. I want to be out there for the, for the introductions and stuff. So I start walking back. I'm underneath the stadium. I'm completely lost at this point. I'm walking out the wrong fucking exits. I, as I'm going towards one of the wrong exits, I just, I'm walking through a guy goes, get on the fucking left, get on the left. I'm like, Oh, whoa, whoa. Okay. Get on the left. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Kyrie Irving just sprints right past me. I'm like, Oh, Hey, have a good game. Kai. And he was like, yeah, thanks bro. And I'm like, Hey man, listen, 
uh, if Wimby Wimby's dropping on those screens, you're going to come off a ball screen. Don't be afraid to pull up. Get a couple of, you know, 18, 19 uh, foot pull up shots. Okay. He's like, yeah, I got you. I got you tonight. I'm looking for that shot. I said, all right, bet. make sure you make sure you pull up on that shot. So that happened. And then I'm like, oh, okay, all right, this is the wrong tunnel. Obviously I'm going to the next one. Then I go to the other tunnel. It was also the wrong tunnel, but I, I walk out that tunnel and some guy goes, Whoa, whoa you got to stay back a little bit. I'm like, okay, why? He said, coaches are coming out. I said, all right. So I'm sitting here, Jason Kidd walks around, shot Sweetie, Dudley all walk out. I'm like, Hey guys, 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 guys. They're like, Hey, what's up? Oh, Hey, what's up? Sonny? I'm like, Hey, what's up guys? Listen, listen, listen. Uh, tonight, you know, let's be physical with Wimby. Let's get Maxi in the game early. Let's let's put PJ on him early. Let's get really physical, put our physical defenders on him. And then over the course of the night, we can switch on our centers. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah. It, they, Sean Sweeney looked at me and said, that's a great idea. And I said, yeah. And then they walked out and then I wa- walked in and then I walked out into my seat and then watched the rest of the game. And I didn't move from my seat other than peeing for the remainder of the game because why the fuck would I do that? I'm not, I'm sitting, I'm not leaving this seat. You're going to have to kick me out of the stadium, basically. I peed for, I peed in my pants. I didn't want to leave. Squiggly, 23 months, side of is to go. Thank you. So anyways, it was awesome. Uh, what was the seat comfort level compared to other American Airlines seat options? I mean, it was fine. It was a little foldable seat with a little pad on it. You know, be, being like a taller guy, you know, a broader guy in a seat like that, it's a little uncomfortable, admittedly. But, you know, who am I to complain? I did feel bad because, you know, <laughs> once you, you sit courtside, right? No, but it does. the seats aren't like layered. And there's about three or four rows of them. So anytime I'd stand up, I would feel bad because the person behind me is not standing up. But honestly, at the same time, fuck you, man. I, I don't know if I'm coming back here. You, you probably run an investment firm. I don't care. I don't care. I'm standing up. So let's get into the actual basketball game shall we the Dallas Mavericks win 120 to 109 on opening night it was a very good performance from them first half was a little bit rough they scored 20 points in the first quarter 27 points in the second quarter I say rough I just mean um, shooting wise I thought that they played well the Mavericks did in the first half of this game, I thought they were getting clean looks. Just it was a matter of the shots not falling. They did shoot terribly from the free throw line, which is a, a concern that I had throughout the, the course of last season. It's a concern I will continue to have. I don't think this is going to be a good free throw shooting team. That's something that could come back to bite them in the ass, especially when we get to this, when the Mavericks reach this level. And it is like, um, you know, you, you want to contend at the highest level. The margins are so razor thin. Stuff like free throw shooting is going to come become a huge factor. I mean, we saw in the playoffs last year, the Mavericks lost playoff games because of free throw shooting. And that could be a death sentence. But first quarter for the Mavericks, eight of 27 from the field, 29%, two of 11 from three, 18% there. Again, I thought they got good looks. I thought they got good looks. Uh, it kind of felt like they were able to get whatever shot they wanted. It just wasn't dropping. So I felt like the Mavericks were in, in control of the game. Uh, and despite, you know, Despite their terrible start shooting wise, they were only down by two points. Harrison Barnes was going crazy. <laughs> Harrison Barnes had 12 points in the first quarter on 5 of 5 shooting, 2 of 2 from 3. And then they started to pick it up in the second quarter offensively. The Mavs did hit some more shots. They had four threes in the second quarter. And the second half, they just popped off 46% from the field, 62% from 3. 13 of 21. The free throw shooting was much better in the second half as well. 14 of 16 from the line, which is something we will gladly take. Only four turnovers in that half, 18 assists. I mean, the offense was just beautiful, man. Beautiful. Beautiful offensive showing from this team. Uh, Luca in the second half was awesome. He scored 19 points, 5 of 11 from the field, 4 of 6 from 3, 4 assists. Again, it just uh, it felt like whatever he wanted, he got.
in the first half. The first half was rough for him shooting wise, but I, I thought the process was good. He was four fourteen. Well, I didn't realize it was that bad. Four fourteen in the first half, oh five from three. But they played well. Kyrie was six of seventeen, had some un very uncharacteristic uh layup misses. It is kind of funny. You know, I, I was watching, I was like across the court from the, the bench. So I was looking at them and, and Kyrie, like anytime Kyrie misses a layup, mind you, kind of tough layups, but anytime Kyrie missed a layup, they'd go over and it, like everyone would give him shit for it. Cause it's just, it's Kyrie Irving. I was like, how the, how the fuck did you miss that? And he was like, oh, I, I didn't put enough spit on it. So to win a game on opening night when your two star players are a little uh, slug, sluggish is the wrong word, just inefficient, you know, not, not hitting shots out of the gate is impressive. And Kyrie, uh, Clay Thompson looked great. 22 points, 7 of 13, 6 of 10 from three. That is, uh, that's enough to make a grown man cry right there, man. That is enough to make a grown man cry. Four or five from three in the in the second half of the game. I want to look at some clips my man Iztok showed about some of the action the Mavs were running and uh, just how unstoppable it looks. This little Spain pick and roll where Clay is flying off of this screen. This this uh. This play where Clay just catches the ball right at the three-point line. No one is around him. He can take a dribble. I mean, this is Clay Thompson we're talking about, man. This isn't Tim Hardaway Jr. This isn't, uh, you know, Derek Jones Jr. This isn't Dorian Finney-Smith. Love all of those guys. This is one of the best three-point shooters in the history of our sport. He's knocking that down. He's exactly the Clay Thompson of old, but he's still making that shot. Then they run the same action later. And the Spurs are trying very hard to prevent the same thing from happening. And it leads to another three because they're disjointed defensively. Because on top of the Clay thing, I mean, this it only gets talked about by Mavs fans. But been warning people. the This pick and roll is such a threat. It's not just Luka and Kyrie that's going to, them being on the court is going to generate so much stuff for the Mavs offensively. The pick and roll with Luca and Lively, Luca and Gafford, Kyrie and Lively, Kyrie and Gafford, is so lethal that the threat of that as well is going to open up so many things for Clay Thompson. I mean, you had Luca. Look at Luca. Luca knows. Luca's having so much fun. And the place was rocking. Anytime Clay touched the ball, the place was rocking. And it, it is. It's going to be fun. Anytime Clay touched the ball with an inch of space and you knew he was going up, everyone just went, oh, shit. Where in years past, that was Tim Hardaway Jr. Tim Hardaway Jr. touched the ball. Everyone would go, oh, shit. But it would be a different different tone, right? It was more of a, oh, shit. Everyone court, everyone courtside. They, you know, I actually heard this. So the guy I was sitting next to courtside told me this story. That last year, when Tim Hardaway Jr. was on the court, that they had helmets underneath the seats. And... Anytime Tim Hardaway Jr. would start to go up with the ball, they would they would go helmets, and you put the helmet on. I thought that was interesting. That's, that's the type of stuff you you wouldn't know. Two maps. This, okay, and now that we've we've gone over Clay Thompson, just looking unbelievable, right? This is gonna be. I mean, he's gonna get so many clean looks. And I've been, I was saying, I was like, I, we'll see. The first shot from Clay will tell us all we need to know of how this game's going to go. It was a little mid-range jumper that rimmed in. And it, once he got that shooter's bounce, I was like, all right. We are good. We're good. But let's talk about defensive, the defensive effort from this Mavericks team, which I thought was really, really good. Uh, now, no Devin Vassell. I do think that's important because the Spurs didn't have really any perimeter uh, threats whatsoever. The Spurs looked really rough, in my opinion. Uh, if this is what it's going to be, they're going to be in for a long season. Chris Paul looked old to me. Really, really old. Seven rebounds, eight assists. I mean, that's fine. I felt like he didn't really have much of an impact on the game. Like, the idea of Chris Paul wasn't 
at least in game one, didn't really match the reality I saw on the floor. And Wimby settled for just a lot of bad shots. Just way too many bad shots. And I was hoping, deep down, I was hoping that this game was going to be like 115 to 113. The Mavericks pull out a tough win. And Luka and Kyrie and Wimby were like going back and forth in the second half. Like just, be, just being there in person, that's what I wanted to see. Wimby was bad last night. One of eight from three, five of 18 from the field. Just settling for bad shots. But a lot of that has to do with the defense the Dallas Mavericks played on him. The Dallas Mavericks played some great defense last night, man. And they're they're like, this roster construction is pretty well built to stop a guy like Wimby. They have physical defenders in Maxi Kleba and P.J. Washington. And then you have uh, Gafford and Lively who are just long and can contest shots. Maxi was a plus 18, team high plus 18. And I thought he was really, really good defensively. Here's his talk with a little uh, insight on the defense here. What the Mavericks were able to do to help make life difficult. Sohan played a pretty good game for the Spurs. I'll give him that. His shot's horrible. You might have heard me on the broadcast. I was screaming, hell no! Anytime Sohan shot. He did make a three, I think, though. But P.J. Washington's a physical defender. This is the communication, right? Gafford's going to pick up Wimby. Clay's going to go to Sohan. So Clay doesn't switch on to Wimby, which is what the Spurs were wanting. That's a tough fadeaway jumper. You live with that shot. He makes that. So be it. Right? You got to give Wimby something. Gafford switches on to Sohan. Lucas, you know, a big defender. They're trying to get Clay switched on to, to Wimby. That's what they want. But the Mavericks do such a good job of switching and communicating defensively that, you know, they're just, they're never really in a compromise, too compromise of a position. Can't believe how many Mavs fans gave up on the Maxi because he was playing injured. Yeah, I mean, Maxi's not a good uh, offensive player, really, at this point in time. And that, that could, again, as I mentioned earlier, when the margins become so thin in, like, playoff basketball, that could become a problem. But, um, you know. His defense is very important for this team. So it was good to see him back on the court. I mean, he looked really good for not playing any preseason basketball, really. Thought Derek Lively played a great game. Uh, Quentin Grimes was fine. Jane Hardy, three of five from three. That's interesting. Jane Hardy, if he's going to get rotational minutes for this Mavericks team, it's not going to be because, um, it's not going to be because he's breaking guys down off the dribble or whatever the case may be. It's going to, it's going to be because he's hitting threes just in the context of this Mavericks team. So him hitting threes is, is a welcome sight to say the least. And I thought Daniel Gafford played really well as well. 19 minutes to get into some foul trouble, but the combination of him and Lively doing exactly what you would expect from those guys. And I thought Najee Marshall played a good game too. Just wasn't efficient one of six, but was all over the court, was really good defensively. I mean, you can see how that's going to work out. Am I missing anyone? PJ played some good defense on, on Wimby. And here we go. This is what uh, we've been talking about, we've been looking at. 44 threes for the Mavericks. Now, granted, they were second in threes last year with 39 a game. This this 43 point attempt number that I've just been infatuated by, the Mavericks will easily clear that this year. They they will shoot over 43s a game, guaranteed. And with Clay here now, they might be shooting it very efficiently. So an exciting first game for the Dallas Mavericks. And a lot to look forward to. Now, they, they do play the Suns tomorrow night as of the time we're recording this. That will tell us a decent, a, bit, a decent bit more about this team only because the concerns for the Klay Thompson, Luka, and Kyrie pairing, right? Uh, if you had concerns about that offensively, you're a fucking, you're a doofus, okay? And that's just the truth. But the concerns about that team is more so defensively, right? Which is understandable. It is in Phoenix. It's it's Phoenix home's op it's Phoenix home opener, and they're on the second half of back to back. They got they kind of got fucked by the early season schedule, but um, it'll tell us a little bit more only because the, the Suns have much better perimeter players. Obviously, Devin Booker, KD, Bradley Beal, even Tyus Jones, I'd throw into that mix, are just better perimeter players than anybody the Spurs have. So. 
Yeah, and Luca first first uh, half of the game wasn't his, wasn't the best shooting wise, but I thought he was playing some really good defense. I mean, he was really engaged. He was going for 50-50 balls. I mean, he, he looked really good defensively. So I, I thought Luca played well. I, and the shooting, you know, nine of twenty-five is not the most efficient in the world, but he did a lot of good things and um, just played winning basketball, which is all you can ask for. All you can ask for. Bonk, 23 months in the slight delusional club. Luca not starting every possession. We back. We're so back.